Hey everyone, Zach here from Windows Central and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a look at the latest Windows 11 feature drop. This update includes a number of notable changes and enhancements over the last Windows 11 feature drop which rolled out in February earlier this year. Microsoft is now updating Windows 11 on a regular basis with new features and enhancements. So no longer do we get, or we still get the sort of major releases in the fall, but in addition to those, we also get these smaller feature drops in between. So this is the second one for 2023 the third one for version 22h2 as a whole uh, so yes let's waste no more time diving straight in the first notable changes are with the taskbar microsoft has updated the weather icon down here to now include animations just like the rest of the system icons on the taskbar so when you click on task view for example or the chat icon there are mini animations that play uh, and the same can now be said for the weather icons down here so if we click on the weather button here you'll see that there's a nice little animation that plays as I click on the button. Uh, and all of these sort of unique weather icons you get down here, whether it be cloudy, sunny, stormy, they all have their own unique animations. So clicking on it will give you a nice delightful uh, sort of jump or something every time you click on the button, which is really quite nice. Now, while we're here, if we go into the widgets panel here, they've renamed it to the widgets board. Originally, when Windows 11 first launched, they were calling it the Widgets Panel, but in recent documentation, they've changed it to the Widgets Board for whatever reason. But it has been updated. The layout is now different, as you can see here. We now get a nice date up the top here, along with a good morning or good afternoon or good evening, depending on what time it is when you're using your computer. Then we have a My Feed area here, which is the MSN News Feed, as well as a Watch tab which uh, is a video from MSN, so that's pretty nice. Uh, but the main change here is that they've separated the widget stuff from the feed. So previously, the widgets and the feed were sort of intertwined. You could move them around within the feed. But now widgets are separated into their own column here. So you can see here we have our widgets on the right. And sadly, this means you can only organize them vertically now. You can't move them side by side and stuff. But you can still move them around. So if you wanted that at the top, for example, if, or if you wanted to make this one larger, you could do that and there you are. Now we can also take a look at what it looks like in full screen, in which case it just enlarges the feed. Sadly, you do not, there's no way to enable multiple columns or the widgets, at least not currently. Maybe they'll add that in a future update. But as of right now, it prioritizes the MSN feed and then the widgets get sort of carted off to the side in a single column. So there you go, that's the widgets board. If we move on to the search box here, the icon that you can see in the search box is now an actual actionable button. So clicking on it will take you to the thing it's advertising, in this case, Bing Chats. Previously, um, the icon would just open the widgets pane, which was kind of useless. Um, but now it will just jump straight into Microsoft Edge and take you to whatever it is it's advertising. Sometimes it will be the Bing chat icon. Other times it will be a theme of the day or a notable person's birthday or anniversary of some kind. So um, yeah, that's pretty cool. And you can see if you hover over it, it does say open in Edge. This is tied to Edge. So even if you use Chrome or Firefox, Windows doesn't care. It will take you to Microsoft Edge and that's what you will be forced to use if you are indeed using any of these sort of internet elements within the Windows search pane. Okay, moving right along, if we go over to the system tray here, nothing's really changed with the system tray, although it does have a new capability. If we right click and go into our taskbar settings and scroll down to taskbar behaviors and then scroll to the very bottom, you'll see there's a new option here called show seconds in the system tray clock. Now what this does is what it says on the tin. It shows the seconds in addition to minutes and hours within the system tray. This is a legacy Windows feature. This was a thing you could do on Windows 10 and prior. It was removed in the original versions of Windows 11, but now it is back. Now the setting does say it uses more power. So if you're using a laptop, be wary of that. But on desktops, you should be absolutely fine. Also, I'm not sure how much more power it's using. It can't be using much more power, right? But hey, there you are. The option is there. In fact, we'll leave it on for the majority of this video, just so you can see the seconds climbing in real time. Okay, up next, we have a nice new addition in regards to notifications. Notifications are now smarter on the latest version of Windows 11. If we pop a verification code here, you'll notice that the, no the, the notification itself now has a... So as you can see here, notifications now have a copy to FA button. So instead of having to manually type out the code you receive, you can just press copy and that's now copied to your clipboard and you can take that anywhere and paste it uh, and the process is much simpler now. So that is a quick look at the smarter 2FA notifications on Windows 11. A nice addition. This is something, you know, smartphones have been doing since forever uh, on Android and iOS, but Windows is now finally gaining the ability to copy a 2FA code directly from the notification itself. So that's 
Um, probably the best update in this release, if I'm perfectly honest. Now, the last thing to do with the taskbar and notifications, if we come back into settings here and go to personalization and set uh, our theme to dark mode, you'll see the search bar turns dark, which is normal. However, if you use your app theme, if you go to custom mode here and you have the app theme set to light, for whatever reason, the taskbar will now also be light, even when you're using dark mode. I don't know why the search box is tied to the app theme and not the Windows theme, but hey, there you are. Looks really out of place now, if I'm perfectly honest, but hey, there you go. That's a change Microsoft has made and documented for whatever reason. Um, in fact, let's let's go to a complete dark mode. Let's keep that for the rest of the video. It looks much nicer in my opinion. All right, let's jump into settings. As always, there are some notable changes in the settings app itself, starting with touch keyboard updates. So this is one mostly for two in ones and tablets, but if you come down to time and language, typing and touch keyboard up here, the option to configure what the on-screen keyboard is doing when you're using a two in one uh, is here now. This was somewhere else before and the behaviors are quite different, but now it's set to when no keyboard is attached, this is the default mode. So if you're using a two in one, such as this laptop here, if you're using it in laptop mode, tapping into a text box, for example, won't display the touch keyboard because you know, the keyboard is attached or it's currently active, you can use the physical keyboard instead. However, you can now change that behavior to showing the on-screen keyboard even if the physical keyboard is attached. So if I tap up here now into the search box, you'll see the on-screen keyboard appears, even though I still have the physical keyboard attached. That previously didn't happen if I had it set to when no keyboard is attached. You can also set it to never, so even if you don't have a keyboard attached and you tap in a search box, uh, you can tell it, no, don't show me the touch keyboard, thank you. Um, which is useful in some scenarios, I guess, but by default it is set to when no keyboard is attached, which makes the most sense. All right, if we move on to Windows Update down here, there's now a new option in here called Get the Latest Updates as Soon as They're Available. This is off by default. However, if you're somebody who is a fan of getting access to the latest bits as soon as possible without wanting to test preview bits in the Insider program, turning this on will download new features as they roll out instead of waiting for the monthly Patch Tuesday release, which releases every month on the second Tuesday. Um, you can just turn this on and they will roll out as soon as possible, as soon as Microsoft is, has deemed them ready to go. So if that's something you're interested in, turn that on, check for updates. If there's any new features available to you, they will begin downloading and installing and you can get them early, which is really quite nice. Now, lastly, in regards to settings, there is a new uh, behavior, a default behavior for the print screen button. Uh, previously, the print screen button would just simply take a screenshot and then copy it to your clipboard. Now, by default, the print screen button is set to open the snipping tool on Windows 11. So I just pressed it there. And as you can see, that now brings up the sort of rich uh, snipping interface, which allows you to do a square or a free form or a full screen or window, sorry, and a full screen screenshot uh, straight through this UI instead of just taking the screenshots and putting it into your clipboard. However, you can change that behavior back. So if we go into... So we're going to accessibility once again and then scroll down and go to keyboard. You'll see if we scroll down here, use the print screen key to open the snipping tool is now set to on by default. This was previously off by default. It was always an option, but it wasn't on by default. It now is. However, if you don't like that, you can simply turn it off and print screen will go back to being its old school, simple screenshotting tool. So there you are. Uh, that is an update to the behavior of, of the print screen key. Okay, lastly is an app update. So this may not roll out at the same time as this feature drop, but it will be coming in the coming weeks after it. If we go to a photo here, such as this one, and go into edit mode, you'll see here that we now have a new option to retouch the photo. So Microsoft has brought back the snipping, the snipping, the spot fix tool, which was a thing on the, the, uh, the photos app years ago, then they removed it for whatever reason, but it's now back. And as you can see, it works as intended. So I can get rid of this Microsoft logo here by clicking. For whatever reason, I can't seem to get it working in the live demo. Perhaps I can paste over a pre-recorded demo of it on a PC that is working. For whatever reason, it's not working here. But the spot fix tool is back and it does work as you would expect normally. So there you are. In addition to the uh, spot fix tool, there's actually a new slideshow option as well. So we go to slideshow here. Uh, we now have the option to play music. You may even be able to hear it. So yes, we have animations, transitions, auto loop. 
uh, and a bunch of other things here. We've got different music styles as well, which is really kind of cool. And yeah, so that is the updates to the Photos app. Sorry I couldn't show you this spot fixing tool. No idea why that wasn't working, but hopefully I was able to cut in some pre-recorded footage of it working as intended. So there you are, that is a quick look at the new Windows 11 feature drop. This is the summer 2023, May, June 2023. I'm not sure what they're going to call it, if anything. But they didn't call, they didn't name the, the last two. They just sort of released them and said, hey, have that, have fun. And so I'm sure they'll do the same here. But there you are, that is Windows 11's latest feature drop. Thank you so much for watching and we shall see you in the next one.